When the wife of Imran, and she was expecting a child, she said, Oh Lord, I have intended, I have given, I have sworn that which is in my womb, in my belly, I have sworn and I have made an oath to make it free, free of any obligations, free of any worldly expectations. But rather, the child that is in my womb will be solely dedicated to the service of Allah. And Allah says, when she finally gave birth, she gave birth to a girl. And she says to Allah, I've given birth to a girl and, and a boy is not the same as a girl. She wanted a boy and he would remain in the masjid and he would worship Allah. This was the idea. As a servant of Allah, as someone who was devout and he would worship Allah in the masjid. But when she gave birth to a girl, will the girl have the same privilege as the boy? That's the question here now. Allah already knows what she gave birth to. I'm naming her Maryam and I seek refuge in you, O Allah, for her and for her offspring from the accursed devil. O Maryam, Allah has chosen you, Allah has purified you, and Allah has chosen you over all of the women of the world. The parents of Maryam did not lose their focus. They said, look, we made an intention. We're going to follow through with our intention. How it's going to work, we don't know. But O Allah, we leave it to you. I put my trust in Allah, Allah, you protect her. Allah accepted, not just accepted, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lovingly and in the best manner accepted this sacrifice and this sign of this, this great devotion and dedication that the parents of Maryam made. The result of that, Allah raised her in the most beautiful manner. So she grew up to be devoted and dedicated to Allah, just like the parents intended. The woman Maryam alayhi salam grows up in goodness good manners, good etiquette. She was a woman of dignity, maturity, intelligence, good character. And Zakaria alayhi salam was her guardian. Zakaria alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah. So see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it continues, this trend continues. When the parents made a good intention and then they raised her properly, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided even for her an avenue to learn directly from a prophet. Her teacher is a prophet. Her mentor is a prophet. What better teacher and mentor can there be? It all goes back to the beginning. The foundation was strong, was solid. Everything being put on top of that foundation is now strong. Rasulullah says about Zakaria that he was a carpenter and he used to eat from his daily earnings. And so Zakaria built a mihrab. He built a structure in the masjid, a room in the masjid. So he built this place for her where she could have her privacy, grow up in that temple and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as a man would. So Zakaria would go up and check on her every single day as she grew up. And this young girl loved to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, she craved it. She would leave to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the times when she could not be in the masjid. She would still go out to the east and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watch the sunrise and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This woman ate you know, breathe, drink the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even as she was a young girl. And so Zakaria Islam would come, find her in ibadah, find her worshipping Allah all the time. Zakaria one time came into the masjid, mihrab, this area. He saw her eating some fruit that was not of the season, something that should not have been available at that time and at that place. And he said, where did you get this from? She responded and replied, Allah gave me this. Teacher, why are you confused? Why does this confuse you? Allah can give to whoever He wants, whatever He wants, however He wants. Allah doesn't have any limits or restrictions. Why does this confuse you? He realized that even though Zakaria was a prophet, look at her level of understanding and her relationship with her creator and how focused she is, that the prophet is learning a lesson from her. She's teaching her own teacher a lesson. Zakaria, the prophet, had one situation. His situation was that he was very old and his wife was very old, but they didn't have any children. And he very, very badly wanted children. But now they were so old, he figured, you know, that's it, I can't have children now. 
So he realized, he said, look at what this girl is saying. Allah is not bound by any restrictions. Right there and there he made dua. Oh Allah, you grant me good, beautiful offspring. And the news and the good news came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. While he was still standing there in the mihrab, immediately his prayer is answered. That Allah is sending you the good news that you will have a son, his name will be Yahya and he will be a messenger just like you. And this is all, once again, connecting back to Maryam. Allah loved her and Allah favored her. Angels spoke with her and they said, Ya Maryam, Allah has chosen you over all the women of the universe. Allah says in the Quran, Maryam, the daughter of Imran, she protected her private parts, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Maryam السلام, then leaves at the time where she would leave the masjid and she goes to the east and as she is there by herself remembering Allah, a beautiful man comes, a perfect symmetrical human being. She sees this man that she doesn't know, but she realizes she's all alone and this beautiful man comes. She sees him and before he can even speak, she looks at him and says, I seek refuge in Ar-Rahman, the most merciful from you if you have any consciousness, piety, or fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at that point, when she said those words, Jibreel alayhi salam went to his original form. And Jibreel alayhi salam gave her the news of Isa alayhi salam, and Jibreel alayhi salam blew into her, and she became pregnant with Isa alayhi salam. This is a closed case, you cannot change this, you can't make dua, you're already pregnant. What does she say? She says, how? How? How could I have a child when no man has touched me and I'm not a loose woman? How could I have a child? And the angel says, just like that, your water says, this is easy for Allah. And Allah says, when the pains of that labor then came upon her, she came to a, a palm tree. Oh, woe to me. I wish I had died before this. I wish I died before this. Or I was something that was just forgotten. Jibreel alayhi salam responds to her, don't grieve, don't grieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a river beneath you and go ahead and shake that palm tree and fresh ripe dates will fall upon you. After she's given birth, she's tired, fatigued, weak. And Jibreel alayhi salam first tells her, don't grieve. Your mother said that you're just a girl. Right? You are saying that you wish you never existed? Allah is going to make you a legend for all men and for all women. That Maryam is not just from the devout women. Maryam is from the devout men and women. She holds her own. She has a special rank amongst all men and all women. And so when she goes back to her people. What do they say to her? They say, Ya Maryam. Maryam, you've done a very strange thing today. But no, your father and your mother were both good. How could it be that this has happened like this? She points towards the, the baby and she says, well, how can we speak to one that is in the cradle? And then Isa Islam speaks. He says, I, I'm the servant of Allah. And Allah has given me a book. Allah has made me a prophet. Highest towards my mother. Allah has not made me, you know, arrogant and haughty. And nor Allah has Allah made me wretched towards her. That's the child saying that on behalf of the mother. And that's her key role there in the Quran. She is, it's always Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Surah 19, Maryam, and in the 16th verse. And mention in the book, Mary, when she withdrew from her family, to a place towards the east and she took in seclusion from them a screen then we sent to her one of our angels and he represented himself to her as a well proportioned man she said indeed i seek refuge in the most merciful from you if you should be fearing god and he the angel said I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you news of a pure boy. And she said, How can I have a boy while no man has touched me? 
and I have not been unchaste. He said, Thus it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me. We will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it is a matter decreed. So she conceived him and she withdrew with him to a remote place. And the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, Oh, I wish I had died before this and was in oblivion forgotten. But he called her from below. Do not grieve. Your Lord has provided beneath you a stream and shake towards you the trunk of the palm tree and it will drop upon you ripe fresh dates. So eat and drink and be contented. And if you see from among humanity anyone say, Indeed, I have bowed to the most merciful absentation, so I will not speak to any man today. Then she brought him to her people, carrying him. And they said, O Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented. O sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. So she pointed to the baby, Jesus, she points to Isa alayhi salam. And they're saying, how, how can we speak to him? He's just a baby. And then Jesus speaks. Indeed, I am the servant of God. Indeed, I am the servant of God, Abdullah. And he has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoined upon me prayer and zakah as long as I remain alive and made me dutiful to my mother and he has not made me a wretched tyrant and peace be on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I am raised alive that is Jesus the son of Mary the word of truth about which they are in dispute it is not befitting for God to take a son, exalted is he. When he decrees an affair, he only says to it, be and it is. And Jesus said, and indeed, God is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him. That is a straight path.